Today we're gonna switch things up a little bit and talk about an app for your Garmin watch. It's called Peter's Race Pacer and it will definitely help you on your next race. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Running Otaku. I am the Running Otaku and today we're gonna focus on Garmin watches. More specifically, an app for your Garmin watch. Now I'm sure many of you know you can actually download apps for your Garmin watches and I bet a lot of you have already done so to change the watch face. But did you know there's a whole myriad of other apps that can help you get more value out of your watch? So the app I'm gonna be talking about today is called Peter's Race Pacer. And I used it for the very first time on Sunday for my 8K race. As many of you may have seen from my previous video, my splits for that 8K were really even. Now I was running with the Stride foot pod, but I was not using power on that day to manage my pace. Instead, I use the Peter's Race Pacer. So the app does many useful things, but there's two in particular on which I want to focus. The first is that it helps you maintain very accurate distance readings on your watch during the race. And the second thing it does is it helps you nail your target time by telling you exactly how many seconds fast or slow you are overall. And also at any point in the race, it tells you exactly what pace you need to maintain in order to hit your target time. So I'm sure you're wondering, how exactly does it help you keep very accurate distance measurements? Well, it's simple actually. Every time you pass a mile or kilometer marker on the race, you just simply hit the lap button and it will auto correct. So for example, if you're running a race and you just pass the three kilometer mark, but your watch says 3.02, if you click the lap button, Peter Race Pacer will automatically reset the distance to exactly three kilometers. Likewise, if you're a little bit short, let's say, you hit the three mile mark, but your watch only says 2.95 miles. If you click the lap button right when you pass the three mile mark, it will auto correct and change the distance to three miles. Now, once it changes the distance, it automatically in real time recalculates exactly what your average pace has been, what exact pace you need to maintain to hit your target time, and exactly how many seconds overall you're ahead or behind your target pace. So you don't need to hit the lap split for every marker. If your watch is exactly on distance, you can just leave Peter's race pace alone and continue running. Or perhaps it's off, but you forgot, let's say for mile marker number four, no need to worry. Just as soon as you get to the next mile marker, hit the lap button and Peter's race pace will take into account that you skipped one lap and auto correct accordingly. So for those of you who have never installed an app on your Garmin watch, let me show you how you install Peter's Race Pace onto your watch uh, and how you use it. And then I'll take it out on the roads for a simulated race to show you what the experience looks like firsthand. Okay, so let's go ahead and get Peter Pacer configured. We will go into activity settings and data screens. Now, right now, my Garmin has two screens set up. Screen number one has four fields, as you see here. Uh, and then screen number two has these three fields here. So what we're going to do is change screen number one from four fields to one field. And the way we do that is we go into the setup here, three fields, two fields, and one field. Okay, now we have that set up. What we're going to do is change this one field from lap pace into Peter Pacer. So we go to connect that queue, we select Peter's race pacer, and that's all there is to it. It's all set up. Okay, so let's see what the in-race experience would look like. Now, when we want to start the run, uh, just like always we go into here and we can go ahead and start the run now let's show the fields here the first three were the ones that we customized so this is the average pace overall this is the perfect pace which tells you exactly how fast you need to run in order to exactly hit your goal time 
This is the average uh, pace. I think in my case, I set it to about three seconds, but you can do smoothing here. This screen I really like. It shows you exactly how far overall ahead or behind pace you are. This timer right here tells you how far, excuse me, how long you've been racing for. Uh, this is the total distance traveled, and this is the ETA telling you exactly uh, what your finishing time will be, assuming that from where you are at any point in the race, you will continue at your target pace till you get to the finish line. Now, you still have full access to the other data screen, just like in the standard Garmin kind of operating system. So you can go back down and see that three field in screen number two, which I had set, and you know, toggle back and forth throughout the race. Lap splits work just like uh, you would imagine. You click the lap button, and you see the standard lap split screen here in Garmin for a few seconds, and then it will revert back to uh, the beater pacer. And then when you cross the finish line, you go ahead and hit stop here, and you can save this run just like any other run you would in Garmin. Okay, so our race is over, and if we go ahead to go into Garmin Connect to see the data, you'll see here, uh, lap one, instead of being exactly mile, is 0 0.97, lap two, 0 0.95, etc. And the total distance that the watch recorded was 2.98. So what's happened here is the following. The Peter Race Pacer is a CIQ app, um, and those apps can actually change the data you see on the screen but they can't actually change the data that gets sent from the watch uh, to Garmin Connect or to third-party apps like Strava. So the inaccurate data you're seeing here in terms of distance is what the GPS actually recorded, but the lap splits, however, are correct. So I'm sure some of you out there several years ago saw a review on DC Rainmaker for a similar app called Race Screen. And in fact, Race Screen is the original app. It predates Peter's race pace by several months. And I asked Peter about this. He told me that he himself was a fan of race screen, but he wanted one specific feature, which was to show pace in terms of kilometers per hour. Uh, and race screen never did that. So he took it upon himself to make a similar app that had the features that he wanted. Um, and so that's what he ended up building. Now, for me, I like Peter's race pace a little bit more on my Garmin 235 for just one simple reason. For me, to my eyes, it's actually a little bit easier to read than race screen, but that's totally subjective. I, total, I fully encourage you to try both out and see which you like best. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention, the app is completely free. So you can go ahead and download it and try it for yourself without any risk. Now the free version does have a please donate message at the very top and bottom field and it blinks on and off and it's a little bit distracting. So you can use it fully functioning with that message, or if you want to donate, you can go ahead uh, and remove that message. And that's exactly what I did because I really, really love to help developers out because without a strong ecosystem, Garmin and Apple products ultimately aren't as good as they could be. So I did donate, uh, I think it was 20 euros to Peter. So that's just about it for today. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Go ahead in the comments below, write and let me know if you have used Race Screen or Peter's Race Pace before and what you think. If you haven't, go ahead and give it a try, it's free. Well, that's it for today. I wanna thank you guys for tuning in. If you liked what you saw, please click the like button. If you really liked what you saw, then go ahead and click subscribe. And while you're at it, click the little bell right next to it. That way, you'll be instantly notified every time I upload a new video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.